Hey, what's going on everybody? It's Caleb. In this episode, we're going to take a look at uploading a file with Django. So everything from creating the HTML form and selecting the file from our computer to uploading that file to the server and saving it on our models. So this might take some time, but it'll be pretty comprehensive and get you started uploading files. Before we get started with that, I just wanted to mention that we've been posting videos on Mondays, Thursdays, and shorts on Saturdays. So if you want to increase your web development knowledge and general programming knowledge, please be sure to subscribe and stay tuned for upcoming episodes. So we're gonna start completely fresh. We're going to create a new Django application. We're gonna do everything right with setting up a virtual environment and basically give you the foundation for building a larger project. So a little bit of extra setup, but I think it'll get us going in the right direction. So the very first thing we're going to do is create a directory for our project. We'll just call it Django Uploads, and we'll change directory into that. So change directory, and now we're going to create a virtual environment. Now, if you need the extra background info on how to get Python and virtual environments going, I have a video for Windows, Mac, and Linux all in one video, so you can check that out. We're just going to get started with Python 3-M. Use the VENV tool and we're going to call the virtual environment .venv. And this is the folder that we're going to put all of our dependencies in. So when you say ls-la, you'll see that we see this one right here. And the dot means it's a hidden directory, so when you just say ls, you're not going to see it. It's also a way to just tell people that they don't need to touch that directory directly. Now to activate the virtual environment, you're going to say dot .venv bin activate. It's going to be a little bit different for Windows. And within here, what we can do is we can say pip install Django. Now we should be able to say Django admin. And that's going to list out a bunch of these different commands. The one we are interested in is start project. So we'll say Django admin start project and give it some name. We'll just call it Django uploads. And we're going to put that in the current directory, which is represented as a dot. Okay, I guess you can't use hyphen, so we'll just get rid of that hyphen. All right, so now we should be able to see we have Django uploads directory and a manage.py, and we still have the virtual environment, which is hidden. And to start the application, we can say Python 3 manage.py run server, and that's going to open the server on this port here, 8000. So visiting that page, you'll get something like this. Great. Now we get this warning about migration. So we are going to be using models for this. So when we upload a file, we want that file to be attached as an attribute to a database record that might have other attributes. So imagine we had a movies table, we had the movie title, we had the movie description, and we had the movie photo. This is an example of where you might use file uploads. And for this, it makes sense to use models and migrations. So let's go ahead and apply our migrations. Now that we actually have this directory that we created for our project, we could close out of this and we'll just say code dot. We're just gonna open that in Visual Studio Code or you can just open Visual Studio Code and move to that directory. And you could start the server inside of here as well. You just gotta make sure you activate your virtual environment. But what I'm gonna do is I'm just going to run the server over in this terminal. And then over in this terminal is where we're gonna do any other commands. So first we'll activate the environment. So we'll say dot dot v and v bin activate. And now that we have the virtual environment activated, what we're gonna do is we're going to apply the migrations. Python 3 manage.py migrate. That's going to apply all of these different migrations. So that'll set up our, our basic database structure. Now let's go ahead and create our own models. So we'll go over into our uh, project, Django Uploads, and we'll say new file models.py. And here we're going to create classes for whatever structures we want to find in the database. From django.db, import models, class, and we'll just go with that example we did earlier, movie. And this is going to inherit from models.model. So lowercase m, plural, and then uppercase m, singular. And then we define any of the attributes it might have. So we'll just have name. And this is going to have models.char field. And if you guys need a little bit more of a background of the different Django things we're doing here, I do have a one hour Django crash course on YouTube for free, which is a great way to get started. Now this is the max character length, 1024 is probably overkill. Let's just go with like, I don't know, 200 image. And this is going to be equal to models dot image field. And in here you can use upload to 
and assign this a value, and this is a subdirectory that the files are gonna be uploaded to. So for example, we'll just make a directory files, and I guess we'll just call it covers for like the cover of the movie. And we're also going to use the admin page so we can see the data for our movies very easily. So what we'll do is we will go into our files, and in our project, we're going to create a new file, admin.py. Inside of here, what we'll do is we'll say from django.contrib, import admin, and then from models, import movie. And we're going to register our movie with the admin site. And the way you do that is with admin.site.register and pass in that class, movie. So if you don't really know what I'm doing here, I'll show you in a second. But what we're going to do is we're going to actually create new migrations. So what we'll do is say python3 manage.py make migrations and then the name of our app which is Django uploads and this may not work and I'll show you why in a second. It says no installed app with label Django uploads. So the way you set it up so that it will recognize our app is you go into settings.py and there will be this table here and you can just add your app to this list called Django uploads and add a comma. Now when we create those migrations, we get another issue saying that pillow is not installed, which is a dependency that we need. So we could just say python mpip or just pip install pillow. So we got that installed and now we should be able to create our migrations. So we created that migration and it'll show up in this migrations folder over here. Now we just need to apply it. So we'll say python manage.py I think last time I used three, but I don't think that's necessary inside of the virtual environment. Uh, basically, it's going to default to three by default. So we can just say python manage.py migrate, and that migration is applied. Now over in the browser, what we'll do is we will go to forward slash admin, make sure our server is running. So it looks like it crashed when we had that issue with pillow. So let's just close out of this run that server again, and go over and refresh the page. All right, so for now, the username and password, mine auto-filled because I've had saved username and passwords. However, you will need to create this account. So to do that, we'll go back over to the terminal. And what we'll do is we'll say python manage.py, create super user. And this is going to ask us for the username, which we'll say admin, and then give us some password. I'm just gonna go with password and say that it's fine we're going to accept that it's not secure okay cool so far so good now let's go back over log in with admin and password we can see oh my gosh so many pop-ups you can see the default tables and then the one we created movies which currently does not have any, anything in it at all but we're able to add a movie we'll just go with the dune movie next we'll choose a file select the image we want to upload open and save now we have one movie object in here, which we can see the file is dune.jpg. All right, so at this point, we have the functionality to store this information in a database, and we can upload this through the admin panel. We haven't done anything on the front end HTML side yet. This is all for administrator use. So if you were building a website where you just needed to say, list some products, and you were the only one who had to upload photos, this would work fine. However, if you're going to build an application where the user needs to upload a photo, such as for their profile or for custom movies or products that they're uploading, then you would need to go a little bit further and build this into HTML. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna build a template so that we can display this image on the page. And then the next goal will be to actually upload this data through the front end HTML. So we're just going to make the movie detail page so that we can pass an ID into the URL and it'll display that movie's information. So for this, it would help if we could see that movie ID. So what we'll do is we'll make a quick change to our admin page to display the IDs. Here's an example of how to do this, pretty similar to what we're doing, except you know they're using books. So what we'll do is we will copy this, and over in our admin.py, we're just going to paste it and make a quick change. So class movie admin, and we're just going to include that ID in the read-only files, and we'll pass that in with this movie, movie admin. Let's see if that did anything. Let's check back on our admin site. Inside of the movie object, we can now see the ID of one. So that'll allow us to grab that movie by ID. So how do we do that? 
Well, to start, what we need to do is we need to go into our URLs and create a new URL path. And we'll also need to create a view to accept that URL hit. So we'll start with the path. We'll say path. And this is just going to be movies and slash. Then we'll pass in the ID, which will be of type int. So it'll look like this. And then this is going to hit views dot movie is what we could call it. So this is going to actually be imported from Django uploads import views. And we're going to go create that file. So right now to complain that this doesn't exist, but in order to make it exist, we'll just go into our application Django uploads new file views.py. Inside of views.py, we're going to create a function to get a specific movie. So we'll say def movie. And this is always going to have the request and the movie ID. Inside of here, what we're going to do is we're going to get that movie. So we'll say movie.objects.get and pass in to the primary key the movie ID that is passed into this view function. So for this, we actually will need to import it. So you can do this automatic import here. Looks good. So let's see if this will return anything. And what we can do is we could say movie is equal to this and it'll get stored in this variable. So if movie is not none, what we're gonna do is we're going to return and invoke the render method this render method will also need to be imported from Django.shortcuts. So that's what we have so far. This is going to take a few arguments. The first one is you're just going to pass the request object to it. Then the template to hit. So the template's actually going to display the data in HTML. So we'll just say movies slash movie.html. And we'll create that in a second. Next up, we'll just say the data that we actually want to show up on the page. This is often called the payload. And we can just say movie is the value of movie. And it's just going to be passed in as a dictionary in Python. So if this is not true, then what we can do is we can return a 404, which you're gonna do that by actually throwing an error, HTTP 404, movie does not exist, which again, another import. Thank you for these little tool tips here and come in handy. All right, last thing I think we need for this to actually work is we need that template. So we'll go in here and we're going to create a new folder, templates. And inside of templates, we're gonna create a folder, movies. And inside of movies, we're gonna create movie.html. All right, so let's just test this out and we're just going to put in here movie. So this is how you will say, hey, we want to grab this value. So whatever value is associated with this key, which is going to be this object here. All right, so that was a lot of stuff. Let's see if it actually works. So we'll give everything a quick save, make sure our server is running. We have one issue. Let's just restart it, make sure it's still working. Okay, I think it was good. And then let's go over to our main page, localhost 8000. And specifically, we're going to look for movies and pass in an ID of one. All right, we're getting closer. Movie got an unexpected keyword argument ID. This might just be a naming issue where inside of our view, we have movie ID and inside of URLs, we just have ID. So let's just go ahead and change this to movie ID. And now we should be able to do a quick refresh. And there we go. We get movie object one, which is exactly what we wanted. So this is the string representation of that object. So let's go ahead and change this to display something else. So inside of movie.html, we could make an h1 and say movie.name. Quick save and do a refresh there and we should be able to get that value. So we got dune. Next up we have a file, which where is that located? If we take a look over in our files, it's going to be in this directory here, files. And then inside of this covers directory, and then we have dune.jpg. I just watched this yesterday, so that's why I thought to use this one. You can change that location, because I think I actually want it to be inside of our application. So to do that, we already have defined this upload to files slash covers, but I think we just need to add Django uploads before this. So we'll say Django uploads, 
slash file slash cover. So that's how you can change the directories. Let's go ahead and try that. We'll go to the admin panel. And from here, let's just go ahead and edit this file. So we'll re-upload that file and save and check the location. So now inside of Django uploads, we have files and then dune.jpg. So we can actually get rid of this directory that is in the wrong location from what I wanted. So we'll delete that. Now to display this in HTML, let's go over to our template, open movie.html, and we're gonna say image, and this is going to have a source, and the source is going to be movie dot, and the attribute is called image, so that's what we're going to put, dot image. And just to see where this is pointing, we're going to put this inside of a paragraph tag too. So we'll put that here and save, do a refresh. And you can see this is the result we get, although our image is not working. So basically if you took this, pasted it right here, we should get that image, but we're getting a page not found and ultimately the image is not loading. So these images are not being served by our server. In order to get this fully working, we have to do a little extra configuration garbage. So what we're gonna do is we're going to tell Django to serve static files. So when we visit that images path, it'll show up in the browser. Then we can use that URL whenever we want to display that image. And with that, we have to define a media URL and a media root in our settings, which I'll show you all of that right now. So inside of settings, anywhere in here, I'm just gonna do it after this base directory. I'm going to say media root, and this is the path where the files are located. And then we're also going to have media URL. This is the path that will be accessed through the browser to find these files. Now, the way I had it set up inside of our model, I defined this upload to path here and this is basically a subdirectory of this media root. So that's why this media root, I'm just gonna leave blank because I put that entire path inside of our model. But let's say this was different or blank, then you might need to get a little bit more specific on this media root where you want those files to show up, such as right here. Same thing for the media URL, I'm just gonna keep that blank. So that configures our URL. The only other thing we have to do is actually say to serve static files. So when we visit a path of a static file, it'll actually show up. So the urls.py is where we define those URLs and we're going to use a function called static. And this is going to actually be appended to URL patterns. So URL patterns plus equals static. So let's import this static function. Now, None of these suggestions are quite right, so let's go up here and just type it out manually. It's gonna be from django.conf.urls.static import static. Now, we're going to also need to pass in our media URL in here, so what we'll do is we'll import our settings file, so from django.conf import settings. Now, what we'll do is we'll pass two arguments to this. The first, the URL, so we'll say settings.media URL. The second one through a named parameter document root is going to be settings.media root. And you don't have to necessarily have this all memorized. I'm referencing some notes for this, but this is what we need to do to serve those static files. So when we hit that URL path, they'll show up. So let's try this out. We'll go back and when you do a refresh, you'll actually see the image. And when we go to this path, you should see that image directly. So far, so good. So that is how you display an image. Now you can just clean up your template and design it however you want. You know, right now it looks pretty terrible. So inside of movie.html, you can change this however you wish. You know, maybe get rid of that path there. Get rid of displaying the movie object directly. Maybe give this some style here. I'll just do this in line for now, just keep it simple. Max width 100 pixels. There we go, it's a little bit better. Maybe it's a little tiny. We'll do 200 pixels. All right, cool. So that's where I'm gonna end this video. So this is essentially part one. In the upcoming episodes, we're going to look at how to actually use Django Forms to 
automatically create HTML forms for us that will allow us to upload files as if we were using this website from a user's perspective. Maybe they need to upload a profile photo. I was going to try and do it all in one video, but this video took a little bit longer than expected and I don't want it to drag on. So hopefully so far we've gotten the foundation and the next video we'll be able to focus on the HTML forms. Thank you so much for watching. If you've enjoyed the content, please be sure to subscribe. I'm also working on a backend course for Python. So if you enjoy this type of stuff, we're going to do a lot more of it. And I have early access to the notes if you want that for free. I'll leave that down in the pinned comment section below. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in the next episode. Peace out.